Good morning, Pat Ziemer here with MagnaWave. Welcome to the MagnaWave Office Hours. Come to you every Tuesday to answer your questions about MagnaWave and PEMF, anything that you may want to uh, discuss at that point in time. So uh, please, if you have a question, just drop it in the chat box and I'd be happy to answer it. Uh, also, I'm gonna kind of change the way I do the phone calls today and, and I really enjoy when you call because it gives us an opportunity to converse and talk about about the situations that you're interested in. Uh, what I'd like for you to do, if you would like to uh, talk to me, I'd like for you to send a text. Text your name and phone number to 502-599-9722. Text me your name and phone number to 502 502- 599-9722. That way all I've got to do is tap on the phone number. I know who I'm calling and I can call you and we can discuss or answer the question that you may have uh, at that point in time. What we've run into when we're getting some of the phone calls in the last few weeks is that several people call at the same time and I can't answer multiple calls and have them on hold like a true uh, radio talk show may be able to do. So this way I can kind of call back uh, as we have breaks in the program and discuss discuss and have conversation. So if you want to talk, want to ask a question, or want to talk about something specifically, text your name and number to 502-599-9722. Today, for those who call in, I'm going to have a uh, hundred of the MagnaWave News and Views. That's about a $35 value. hundred of the MagnaWave News and Views, if that's what you choose, or we're going to give away some gear, uh, which is a MagnaWave hoodie. It's getting a little chilly out there for some of the folks who aren't south. And so we're going to have a MagnaWave hoodie today uh, for if, you, if that's what you want. You can have your choice of the MagnaWave hoodie or the uh, News and Views uh, newspapers uh, by MagnaWave fully describing everything that's going on. So again, text your name and number to 502 599-9722 to uh, visit with us and to win one of those two gifts. Okay, also with that said, uh, I want you, uh, Alexa, our Alexa flash briefings are going very well. Uh, a lot of good information is being put up, some of it interview type, some of it just information that, uh, uh, that she delivers, Alexa delivers herself. Uh, for, with regard to history, protocols, uh, that type of information that's available to you. What I want you to do, if you have an Alexa device in your home or, or on your phone, uh, which you can get, if you have an iPhone, you can go to the App Store and download the Alexa app and use Alexa in that fashion. Or if you have an Alexa device, an Echo or an Echo Dot uh, at home, you can go to uh, your, your um, uh, Amazon account and add the MagnaWave Flash Briefing. So if you do that, what's going to happen is once a week, twice a week, when Alexa is presenting the flash briefing, she will tell you when to text something in order to win. So she may say, uh, text MW Alexa rocks that particular day and you'll be eligible to win something uh, from Alexa. That could be everything from gear, maybe a machine, who knows, but I want you to go to uh, Alexa, sign up, get the flash briefings every day, uh, listen to them as you wish. All you got to say is, Alexa, what's my flash briefing for today? She'll give you a minute, minute and a half long, maybe two minutes once in a while, a flash briefing of valuable information about MagnaWave and PEMF technology that you can grow and learn from. Whether you're a practitioner or someone just interested in learning more uh, about MagnaWave. So again, text your name and number to 502 599-9722 and I'd be happy to uh, call and visit with you or go to the Facebook page and uh, post your, let me turn this off, post your um, question in the chat box and I'd be happy to, uh, to, hello Hazel, hi Barbara, thanks for being with us, Emily's with us, uh, Barbara Anderson Van Lu is with us, so several folks are with us today, that's great, we're glad that, uh, that you're here. So uh, thanks for joining us. What I want to do is I've had some questions that have been asked and I want to kind of cover them so we can have them for this presentation, have them for Alexa, have them for the daily uh, uh, post that we do on the MagnaWave page. And so here is one of the questions and the question is when and if you can treat after a particular injection an epidural, cortisone, or stem cell type of injections. Let's first talk about 
uh, an epidural injection that's quite often uh, given to people. And it's an injection that's provided, uh, let's say someone's having back issues, they give an epidural injection into the spine to basically uh, reduce the inflammation or cover up the pain front that they're having in their back. Uh, once that's delivered, can you treat, you know, people have had or epidural injections I've experienced in the past and they gain some relief from that. It's short lived in some cases, some cases it's, it's, it lasts well. If they're not having any pain, then there's really probably no reason to treat. But I've had people who have epidurals and to some level their pain is still there, meaning there's still inflammation in the area. So will something to reduce the inflammation and relieve pain be beneficial? I would think so. So in those types of situations, you can continue to, to, uh, to treat. Will this get rid of an epidural injection that's put into the body? No. Um, and that's, that's not the case. Uh, cortisone shots. Uh, cortisone, I'm not a fan of when you talk about giving cortisone injections, whether that's to a person or an animal, because it is really something that masks the pain takes it away. For example, I've always, uh, we've always taught, we've been told that if you have a cortisone injection in a knee uh, to cover the pain and to, and to make it better, uh, it's not going to do us any good to treat that area. Doesn't mean you can't treat the back or doesn't mean you can't treat some other section of the body if there's an issue, but the area where they give the injection typically for 30 days, it doesn't make any difference what you do because that's going to control the environment in that particular area of the injection. I don't like that a lot because so often uh, in, in an animal, for example, they'll give a cortisone injection and 30 days later when the thing begins to wear off, the animal is actually in some cases worse because they have continued to exercise and use the limb or use the joint uh, while the injection is there and the problem continues or becomes exacerbated. So I don't care for that personally, but there's a lot of people and I'm not a veterinarian so or doctor, so there's a lot of reasons why they want that and they understand that and you always want to consult uh, with your doctor to understand why you're having an injection or what a particular injection is going to do. Stem cell injections, uh, MagnaWave PEMF has been known and shown to help the body uh, manufacture stem cells so it will enhance whatever you're using stem cell injections for uh, and quite often a stem cell injection into the body kind of serves, it kind of operates like a magnet if you will. It penetrates through the body to the area that it's needed, to the area of issue and there and kind of goes there and does its job uh, by improving blood flow and body oxygenation to the body that will enhance what's going on quite often with the uh, stem cell type of injections so very good questions uh, with regard to when you can inject and or not inject but when you can treat in most cases you can you can treat right along with what's going on we talk about waiting 24 or 48 hours let them do their job let them get in place and then come back and um, and provide additional treatments if you will next question we get a lot is what about treating with blood clots well, the, the basis is certainly you always want to, if someone has a blood clot situation in their body, you always want them to check with their doctor. We don't want to do anything to move a blood clot or cause something to uh, be exacerbated by virtue of the treatment. So you always want to have them check with their doctor. With that said, quite often if someone has blood clots that they're worried about, they don't want them doing a lot of activity. They're going to monitor what they're doing, how they're operating. They're going to be on medications to keep the clots from forming or to keep the clots from moving around much. And, and so that all needs to be in the consideration. Uh, certainly if someone has blood clots in their leg and they've got a sore back, does that mean you can't treat the back? Well, you're going to be treating the back. You're not really enhancing or pulsing the area where they have the blood clot. So that's something that, that could be considered. Common sense is always the best way to think things through and, and to discuss what you're going to do. But I always say for first and foremost, check with the doctor, the client's doctor, whether it's an animal or a person that you're dealing with and, and get the direction from the doctor as far as what they consider to be uh, safe and cautious with regard to any type of therapy that's being delivered. Uh, the next question that we receive a lot is what about after a bone fracture? 
Well, in, in, in theory, uh, or in actuality, the improved oxygenation and the improved blood flow will allow the body to begin the healing and mending process more rapidly. When it comes to animals and fractures, we like to wait 10 to 14 days so the, the wound or the, the fracture can begin to, to mend on its own and mend in the proper fashion and then we begin to treat as to not have some kind of false reading. We noticed uh, years ago when, when people would be using PEMF on fractures on horses that they would come back three to four weeks later do an x-ray and the wound would, the, the bone would look pretty good and uh, on the exterior but the interior was still uh, healing and so they would go back to to work too soon uh, whereas if we wait the healing basically begins from the inside out and what we do is evidence from the inside out and so when they come back to do a picture or an x-ray quite often and it looks good then it's good throughout so that's again a decision by the doctors and how they want to do it but we do see improved healing time when we're going with fractures in people you can begin as soon as you wish as soon as the doctor says yes let, let's go ahead and do this uh, because a person knows if something's hurting them. A person understands that it's going to take time to do this. An animal doesn't. So you want to be safe on an animal and start at the proper time so you get the right kind of healing. In a person, they're, they're going to test many things as far as the stability, as far as the pain, as far as the healing process when you're treating a fracture. So again, in an animal, 10 to 14 days after the fracture begin treating. On a person, you can start treating very quickly to enhance the healing process and speed things along. Uh, so that's the question. Let's see, I believe we had a, uh, we, uh, let's see, we got a message here. Uh, let's give, uh, let's call, we got Hazel's calling. Let's see how this is gonna work. Uh, I thought the phone number would, Come right up, but let's dial it up here. Let's, uh, let's, okay. Well, I gotta learn how to do this myself, you know. Um, okay, 231-360-7748. Okay, let's see what we get. See how this is going to work out. Oh, now the number's busy. Uh, we'll try it again. Let me make sure. Oh, two, three, one, three. Okay. <laughs> I should write this down. Oh, yeah. The best laid plans. <laughs> You get you get messed up with the best laid plans, but we're going to make this work. We're going to figure this out and uh, be able to uh, control this and uh, Hazel. So here we go. I thought that I'd be able to just push right on the number and uh, return a call to the. Oh, I can do that. Here we go. I didn't think about that. All I got to do is go to the little icon on the right and go to it and see what's happening. Never mind. Hi, Pat. Hey, Hazel, how are you? Took me a minute to figure out how to use my own phone. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> and then I typed in the wrong phone number. Sorry about that. I, an 8 instead of a 9. No, you did good. Um, I do have a question about plantar fasciitis. I oh. just started working on a gentleman. Um, I worked on his feet, but he, he says his legs ache him so bad because of all this. Should I be working on his legs, too? Absolutely. I mean, you want to work on the area of problem or the area okay. of discomfort, but if his legs are bothering him, sure, work on his legs. I'd do his low back, his legs, and his area of his foot, the back, the heel area of the plantar fasciitis. So I'd work the whole area. Absolutely. Okay, with, with the zoom paddle on his feet? and Daddy, should, I, should I do the splitter and do his legs and feet at the same time? You could. You could do that okay. because you're going to you want him to be comfortable certainly and you could and you're going to get more power out of the paddle uh just by, by nature of the paddle so you could do the splitter you could use the loop for example on his legs and then and do you could alternate from one leg to the next if you're doing a 10 minute treatment and then do the uh, paddle on on each foot that's a great idea you okay. can certainly okay. do that absolutely okay. I, and that's and i was going to ask about the lower back too so 
you really think I should, huh? Sure. I mean, if his lower back's bothering him, treat it. For okay. sure. Now, All right. okay, Hazel, now my question is, what do you want? Do you want the newspapers or the or the hoodie? I want the hoodie, please. You want the hoodie. And, yeah. and what size? Um, probably small. Small. Yep, I'm a tiny girl. Okay. <laughs> hey, Hazel, thank you for giving us a call, and uh, we'll take care of it. Have a great day. All right. Thanks uh -huh. for your information, Pat. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. There you go. Hazel was the uh, first caller on the uh, Hazel Reed, and she's the winner. She's gonna, she chose a hoodie. So if you'd like to uh, visit with me, give me a text at 502-599-9722. Just text me your name. I, I figured out how now to call back. I got that. <laughs> Brad helped me out with that, how to handle that and uh, call back and, and uh, deal with it. So, okay. So uh, if you have a question, uh, send me a text. We'd love to uh, visit with you and answer your questions that you may have. Again, you get a hoodie or uh, 100 copies of the MagnaWave News and Views to use as handouts uh, for your customers. Uh, so I hope that was ha helpful for uh, Hazel. All right, let's see. We were dealing with blood clots, uh, bone fracture, um, time frame on treating after chemo. All right, so let's let's talk about that a little bit. Quite often, when someone has chemotherapy uh, in with cancer, more and more doctors are working with us today and understanding that these people are in a lot of pain and they want something to help relieve their pain and make them more comfortable and give them a sense of of well-being. If you sometimes if you treat while they're receiving chemo it enhances what's going on with the chemo while that may not be a bad thing we don't want to enhance the feeling of them being sick or the fact that chemo sometimes make people sick at their stomach or, or to feel bad so what we recommend if someone's receiving chemotherapy once the chemotherapy process is stopped uh, wait a day or so to let it kind of get out of the system and then begin treatments right up until they go through another round of chemo that might be a week that might be two weeks whatever the situation may be we've noticed that folks who are on low dosage um, pills or low dosage oral type of uh, chemotherapy again you always want to check with the doctor and see what their thoughts are and understand what they're what these people are wanting to do from an integrative standpoint for their well-being and to feel better uh, that's basically all we're doing is helping them f feel better and, and giving them some improved oxygenation and blood flow but with the with the oral pill type situation has not been as much as an issue but you always want to preferably wait until the chemo round has been completed. A lot of folks who are on the uh, pill form of chemo, it's a longer process because they're giving less chemo. There have been some, some uh, studies and there have been some studies that are underway or people are talking about doing with utilizing lower doses of chemotherapy in addition with a complementary method of PEMF or something like that at the same time in order to in, in, increase or improve the effectiveness of what's being done without the related uh, illness that's or the sickness that's quite often associated with chemo. So check with your doctor, see what's going on. Uh, the doctor may want you to experiment a little bit with this particular person to see what, because everybody wants them to be comfortable. Nobody wants to have the pain uh, associated with these types of situations. So anything may help. But uh, as a rule, <clears throat> wait a day or so after the chemo is completed and then begin to treat as as the doctor understands as you understand the client wants to do uh any questions be put them let's see if there's anything in the chat box over here my goodness all of a sudden there's a bunch of stuff popping up here let me clear this off see what's on the uh charlie conyers with me this morning hey charlie charlie and i go back a long way uh, Charlie worked with me in my band back in high school days. He was our equipment guy and made sure that everything was in place. And and uh, Charlie did. Charlie's great, great guy and uh, dear friend uh, for years and years. And Charlie's with us this morning. Good morning, Charlie. Charlie, if you got a question, let me know. Uh, Janet's with us. Uh, top line priority. Good morning. And uh, so thanks for being with me. Let me see. Ben's with us. Any questions? Have there been any studies on the optic nerve? and strengthening of it. 
Well, there are some uh, great question, uh, Jessica. Uh, there, there are people who use the PEMF. They'll put the coil up to their eyes, up to their face, and to get the good oxygenation and the and the good pulsing into the eye region. Certainly, if there's inflammation re in those areas, this will help fight the inflammation with the oxygenation and the improved blood flow to the area, uh, which could be beneficial uh, to what the person is experiencing. Experiencing and uh, so that you know you can Google optic nerve PEMF and see if there's been any specific studies uh, with regard to that uh, but from the standpoint of improved blood flow improved body oxygenation uh, to the area people have found some very good um, stories and testimonials that they've been able to share with regard to uh, optical nerve or types of situation uh, let's see um, any other questions here? Okay, here's a question. Uh, do you have how many testimonials on treating Parkinson's and the success rate? Have a person that is two years into this disease and I want to treat them with a MagnaWave. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, um, Ben, uh, there have been many people who have used PEMF while they, uh, when they suffer from Parkinson's. Can we say that it, that it, uh, we can't say that it heals Parkinson's or anything like that, because we're not doctors. Doctors can approach that and, and differently than what we can discuss here. But do we have people, if you go to the um, <clears throat> MagnaWave, te uh, uh, MagnaWave PEMF um, testimony, MagnaWave PEMF, um, International Education and Research page, MagnaWave PEMF International Education and Research page, put in Parkinson's and you will see uh, testimonials from people who have had and stories and, and how they have treated Parkinson's and what kind of results they have experienced. We've, uh, we've had a number of people whose their symptoms have been relieved and they've been much more comfortable in their day-to-day -day lives. And, and, and Ben, if you're in the uh, MagnaWave APF certified practitioners group you can go there and search the same thing and 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 ask the question of the practitioners and they'll share what they have learned and uh, with regard to those types of situations great question and I hope that's helpful let's see what else we have and again if you'd like to talk to me win a uh, hoodie or a hundred of the MagnaWave news and views text your name to 502-599-9722 and we'd be happy to uh, answer your questions. Let's see. Male patient who has had injections in hips, been treating from lower back with large wings, other suggestions uh, for placement or attachments to help. Well, there's several. If you're using the wings, I don't know how you're using them necessarily, but if you're treating the hip to place a wing on top of the hip and a wing uh, at the back uh, of the hip of the body and you're basically treating all the way through the area could be very beneficial. If you're using the large wings, you could almost double each one of them down and put it over. So basically you've got two large loops on the hip top and bottom. Another way to do it would be to bring the wing to, to take the wing and double it down and bring it up the leg and rest the leg inside of the hoop inside of the loop and treat basically you're treating the whole hip area you just want to cover the whole area is what you're really the best thing to do you could take and have the person lay down and lay, lay you know their hips in the center of the large loop then other lay the other large loop over the top of their body and treat in that fashion and so you're treating basically both hips which is not a bad thing if they've got a problem in one hip quite often they compensate and then they have they compensate as they walk as they sit as they carry themselves and they have pain on both hips or both sides of the body or their knees whatever so to treat both sides is certainly not something uh, to avoid and could be very beneficial to uh, those types of situations. Uh, great question, and I, I hope that helps. Let's see if Brad's got anything else to put up for us. He puts them up, and so I can see him uh, if he puts them up there, if there's any additional questions. Send me a text, get yourself a hoodie, and I'd love to talk with you and uh, visit about things. Let's see if there's anybody here that's um, with me on the text area. Um, nope. 
Yep, that's good. So uh, give me a call or give me a text and I'd be happy to return your call to, to visit about anything else that you want to talk about. Okay, let's see. Um, so a question is why we avoid calling something a protocol? Well, because we, we, we're not medical people. Now a doctor, we have a lot of doctors in our system who are medical doctors, they're chiropractors, uh, they're naturopaths, and they can, they can discuss uh, um, uh, diagnosis. They can discuss a protocol that they're going to give to someone. Someone else who, who is not in the medical side of the house, they don't talk protocols. They talk guidelines. This is what we've learned through testimonials. This is what people have experienced, what is what is helps them. Quite often if you use the word protocol, you're saying that this will do that. And we don't as, as a practitioner who from not the medical side of the house and again I'm not trying to say certainly the medical side of the house can say and diagnose and do what they wish but we don't use the term protocol because we don't want to imply that something will do something uh, or this follow this particular protocol for this result and, and so that's why we don't use the term protocol we talk about sensitivity uh, we talk about uh, guidelines, we talk about suggestions, we talk about testimonials and how you may take those testimonials and use them. It's kind of like supplementation. You have a, a vitamin supplement that you take that is an over-the-counter type of thing that's non-invasive that, that you're told if you do this it may be beneficial to this particular type of condition. So that's kind of how we uh, how we approach it and why we don't use the word protocol in our daily uh, discussions if you will. Great question. Uh, no other questions that are up at this point from Brad. So let's see what we have next. Um, why is the session time longer with the semi? Okay, and that's really a very good question. And and so in from a couple of standpoints that I'm going to try to explain, the semi operates at about 60% of the power, the maximum power of the Maya or the max. Now, so that means that you may take the max or the Maya and turn it up a little higher on a particular area that you're dealing with to get more energy into the area. The semi, on the other hand, operates, as I, as I said, about 60% of the max. So in order to achieve the same type of result that you could get by turning up the max, we just use the semi a little longer. Now, with that said, if you're using the wings on a horse or you take the wings or a mat and you put it on someone's back and you're treating their back and you would only turn the machine up to 30 or 40 percent with the max and you turn the, the semi up to its higher setting, you don't need to treat any longer than 10 minutes. Their treatment times are basically the same. Where it really doubles down is if you're treating a knee because you can turn, because there's less tissue on the knee, you can turn muscle, so on and so forth, around the area, less muscle mass, you can turn the machines higher to get more energy into the area. So that means, let's say with a Max or a, or a Maya or a Pulse Pro, you might turn it, in some cases, all the way up to treat a knee or to treat an ankle. Whereas on the semi, you can turn it all the way up, but you're only getting 60% of what you get with the max. So what do, in order to enhance what you're doing, instead of doing it for 10 minutes, you do it for 20. So you're getting the highest energy available from that device for 20 minutes as opposed to 10 that you might use at a higher setting on a max, you use the semi. So that's why we treat a little longer with the semi. In all cases, do you have to do that? No. Is it a good rule of thumb to make you uh, comfortable and confident in what you're doing? Sure. It doesn't hurt to do that and so that's why we do that with the semi. We found mm -hmm. with the wave wings uh, on a on a horse for example that you you can use the semi on medium and you only need to do it for five minutes if you're treating both hips and so the time is is, is about the same using that type of apparatus or that type of attachment 
uh, on the semi. Okay, let's see. Uh, Terry has a question for us, so let me uh, take a look here. And oh, now, now that time it highlighted properly uh, on the number. And so let's give Terry a call and see what the question might be. It's ringing. Hello. Hey, Terry. Pat Zemer here with Magnaway. Hey, Pat. How are you? I'm great. How are hey, you? What can I I'm help doing, you? I'm doing great. As a matter of fact, doing so well that considering um, picking up an, another machine. God love you. Um, I know. <laughs> I know. You know, sometimes I go in these barns and I've, uh, one of them, I had nine horses plus the trainer plus the barn owner and thinking, boy, this is a long day. Yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely. Um, if I could... I, have two machines running it that would be wonderful yep, but so absolutely. my question is and a friend of mine had sent uh, it was in one of the online equine chat groups or or uh, swap groups or something but somebody had posted about a used machine uh-huh and a friend of mine sent it to me but you know what does so this is my question what does magnawave have available what do you advise you know if i'm looking at a used machine versus which i'm not necessarily but um if somebody were to do that what resources are available to them through magnawave to kind of you know to check the machine to get them up and running are there any other warranties or you know how does that work that, that's a great question and we recommend a couple of things and uh, number one if you're looking at a, at a used machine of uh, from the internet or from someone, you want to try to get the serial number, um, and because and you can give that to us, and we can do a history uh, search on that particular machine to make sure that it it. It, it's been well cared for, that it hasn't had any catastrophic issues that are going to cause problems for you down the road uh, uh -huh. as you're using that device. So we like to, that's just a, a, a good it's kind of like a what do they call it Carfax on a car you can see if it's been wrecked how bad it's been damaged uh, what's going on uh, how many hours are on it so on and so forth so that it that's a good thing the other thing you and and this doesn't happen very often but there have been machines stolen there have there are machines out there floating around that that uh, that if you get that serial number then you can verify that that is the correct owner that the machine is clear and that you can you can purchase it you also want to make sure uh, people have bought machines from folks online that there's still a bank lien on and someone sells it and all of a sudden the bank comes back and says wait a minute there's a lien on this machine you can't have it and they take oh, it back gosh. but you paid for it so you, these, I'm not trying to say to keep anybody from buying anything online but there are some checks and balances you want to go through uh, sure. if you're going to do that and certainly serial number would be the first and to make sure that that what the history of the device is and that it is a device that's good to be resold okay because there just really aren't i mean people don't sell machines no i mean it, it, <laughs> so it, it, people ask me really that all the time used ones out there so. right right so okay. uh, and and there are some you know uh they hold their value very well um but at the same time there i've had people that have had their machines for several years they decide I, you know i'm going to retire or i'm going to do this and they make a wonderful deal to somebody and that's great Mm -hmm. You know, okay. uh, and, and and you're in the system, you're certified, you, you know, you can do the train, you know, you've done the training and all that. So, you know, what you have as far as machines. The only other thing would be if someone, and not yourself, but let's say someone else out there just for information purposes decides they want to buy a machine that's online from someone and the price is real good and then they come back and want to be trained, there is a charge for training at that point okay. because okay. They, they purchased outside of the system. But that, okay. that that's okay. And then you mentioned, you know, that it's serviced and it's had a good history and everything. What, um, we've got two machines. We've got um, a Maya and a um, Semi mm -hmm. um, right now. Mm -hmm. And then what, so those are both digital machines. But can you real quick just talk about the recommended service on the Spark Chamber and on digital and what, what should we be doing well, with these it, machines? Well, in the digital world, uh, they require a lot less service because you don't have the Spark Chamber itself that can wear out. The energy is created from the computer chip or the computer panel on the thing so as long as it's taken care of they, virtually those machines could operate for years with with no uh, with no problem on the spark chamber machines uh, you know a good number is it depends how high if someone is treating abscesses and they're turning that or ankle problems and they're turning those machines up all the way all the time four or five six hundred hours the spark chamber is going to show some wear to where it 
would not hurt to be replaced. If person okay. is, is treating normally, moderate settings, treating backs and hips and so on and so forth, 800,000, 1100 hours before a spark chamber may need to be replaced. And, okay. and so, and, and that's not typically an expensive replacement aspect of the device. There's other parts and other ways of manufacturing, putting them back together that are more costly, but that's typically the, the situation. When someone buys, for example, uh, and it's kind of interesting, as a spark chamber wears, the machine becomes a little more powerful because the electrodes are farther apart and because they're wearing a little bit. And so quite often somebody will use their machine for a year, year and a half and just arbitrarily decide, I'm gonna send it back and get it fixed, get it you know, cleaned up. And they send it back and they get it cleaned up and they put a new spark chamber in it just because it's the thing to do and they get it back and it doesn't seem as strong because the spark chamber hasn't worn the way their old spark chamber had worn. So what I tell folks, as long as you're happy with how it's doing and you can turn it all the way down and you can turn it all the way up, leave it alone. Okay. No sense in doing anything. Now, if you've had it for three years and, and, it, and you're about to go out of your initial warranty, send it back, get it cleaned up, get it brought up to speed and you're, and you're ready to go. But I've had that, I don't want to say backfire, but I've had that people do that then they get it back and they say, well, it's different. Well, yeah, it's got a brand new spark chamber. So you got to break it all in again. And then depending on where you are, that could be uh, to get to the strength that you're comfortable with. That could be a hundred hours or so. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate the answer on the, uh, with this used unit, because it does seem like the price is a little bit too good to be true. Um, you know, so the key there is get the serial number and get check it out. Get serial number first. and get it checked oh. out and make sure that, that everything's, okay. you know, I don't want you having. Okay, so what do you want, a hoodie or the newspapers? I, you know what, I'll take the newspapers. Newspapers, news and views. Yep, that'd be awesome. Okay, thanks. Well, thank you so much for calling. Okay, thanks for calling back. Mm -hmm. See you Bye bye. There you go, some uh, very good uh, questions from Terry. So uh, uh, that's working out pretty well. So uh, text me your name uh, to 502-599-9722 and then we'll get right back to you and have the conversation that you would like to have and discuss. Let's see here, other questions. Um, why is the section, oh, got that. Um, what is the intensity, frequency, and gauss? What is intensity, frequency, and gauss? Okay. Intensity is the strength with which the machine is, is putting out the signal. So you can have a low intensity that's very comfortable that maybe you won't even feel it's so low, or you can increase the intensity to where you feel the pulsing, or you could increase the intensity to where you're getting a lot of muscle movement and contraction. What we like to do is have the intensity to where we're providing as much energy as possible comfortably to the body. There are many people who don't like that higher intensity or that amount of movement uh, in their shoulder or in their gut as they're being treated. So the comfort is the key. We always want to go to comfort. Uh, so that's the intensity uh, area. Frequency with our devices, we're non-radio frequency devices. So you don't take our devices and tune them to 35 or 42 or 10 or 7. Uh, if you want to in, uh, go into this, frequency is how fast the machine fires. So if it's firing slow, click, 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 that's got a frequency. If it's doing five clicks a second, that's basically, for conversation's sake, five hertz, five pulses per second. If it's doing 10 pulses per second, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that would be 10 hertz or 10 a frequency of 10. You dial that frequency in for comfort uh, or for the, the number of clicks that, that you're looking for. There have been a lot of studies done over the year where people talk we do so many pulses per second or so many pulses per minute and this is what we receive. You can adjust any of our machines pretty much to the number of pulses you want per second or pulses per minute if that's important. What many people have found, what Dr. Pollock has shown, what Dr. Bob Dennis has shown is that the waves work, they do their job. The difference in strength relates to how quickly something works. Very low uh, frequency uh, takes longer to get the results you're looking for. More energy gives you the result more rapidly that you're potentially looking for. A combination of the two gives you good result rapidly and good healing uh, on the back end. 
the Gauss. The Gauss is a form of measurement uh, developed by Gauss, developed by Tesla, uh, that measures how much energy is going into a, a particular particular area. A lot of the lower uh, frequency, lower voltage units uh, operate, and this would be like the Imers units, the Beamer units, uh, the Curatron, uh, quite often different uh, units that are there, uh, the QRS units, uh, generate and operate in the uh, many times in the lower 25, 35, 50, maybe 100 Gauss of energy. That's why you'll see their, their treatment times are longer. Treat for an hour, treat every day for an hour, treat for 16 minutes every day and build up your time over time to where you're treating yourself every day for a period of time. With the higher Gauss units, the high voltage low frequency units that are putting out that are operating anywhere from 250 500 gauss to up to 10,000 or in some cases 20,000 gauss 20,000 gauss would be two tesla so when you're when you're looking at the various machines you'll see that they the low power machines operate in what they call uh, micro tesla or milla um, uh, milligauss and and so it, it might be a thousand or two thousand or ten thousand milligauss which equates back to 50 gauss so it gets a little confusing but that's what it is uh, we're put we are uh, part of the association of pmf uh, professionals and they're quitting coming up with a rating system that measures class machines class uh, a class one class two class three class four with the gauss ratings with the power that's put out from the various machines and that'll soon be on our website so you'll be able to see which machine what class it fits with regard to the uh, gauss output of the device great questions let's see if there's anything else up if there is um, give me a call or, or send me a text 502-599-9722 uh, and I'd be happy to call you back and discuss whatever you want again don't forget if you uh, give me a text you get yourself a uh, MagnaWave hoodie uh, that's up here or you can have the MagnaWave news and views a hundred copy of of the news and views to uh, give to your uh, clients and customers so they can have good information about MagnaWave and PEMF and how it can be beneficial uh, to their uh, there are their animals uh, health and wellness uh, here we go uh, Jennifer asks a question I have a horse who spiked a fever of 104 yesterday let me pull that back down um, vet thinks it's viral labs are normal is it safe to treat one with a high fever or unknown of unknown origin here's the thing and 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 um, it, it are you okay to to improve the blood flow and improve the oxygena oxygenation uh, uh, of that animal to fight what's going on. Yes. However, uh, what you need to understand, uh, what we've discussed quite often with, with doctors, if it's a virus, if it's a viral type of thing, uh, they're going to go through that. They're going to push themselves through it. So in some cases, when, when I've had a virus myself, for example, like a flu virus, and I treat myself, it doesn't necessarily make it go away uh, or help it go away, but it'll push me through it more rapidly, which means the discomfort that's there, I'm going to go through it and I might go through it more rapidly. And is that necessarily comfortable for someone? Is that comfortable for the horse? Yes, uh, the, beneficial, the beneficial aspect of the improved blood flow and the improved blood oxygenation uh, can be comforting uh, to the animal as it's dealing with those types of things, those types of, those types of issues. But they are viral and you're just gonna push them through it potentially more rapidly uh, as you deal with it. Great question, uh, and I hope that was helpful so you better understand the difference between a bacterial type of infection where the oxygen will certainly aid in helping to get after the bacteria and attack, <coughs> attack the bacteria accordingly, as opposed to a virus. So, um, uh, great question, and you're doing the right thing. Check with the vet, ask the vet, what do you think? I'm gonna, I'm gonna improve the oxygenation and improve the blood flow, help relieve any pain that's in their back or so on and so forth as a result of this. See what the vet says, but that's a way to approach that type of situation. All right, let's see if we've had anything else. Um, uh, we did that. Um, 
Kelly asks, any success does it have with white line disease? Horse had it over six years and is quite uncomfortable this fall. Okay, so when you're, when you're, you're dealing, if the horse is uncomfortable, and it's had white line disease and it's still having a, a situation there, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with inflammation. We're dealing with something that, that is causing pain. Can this device help with the oxygenation and the blood flow to relieve those uh, situations? Yes, a and certainly to improve blood oxygenation and blood flow can make that animal <clears throat> more comfortable with that it's had experienced uh, white line disease and the associated pain and discomfort uh, with that. Uh, Kelly, great question. Let's see if there's anything else. That looks like that may be it. We're getting close on time. We got a few, another 10, 12 minutes to go. If you'd like to uh, send me a text that I can call you back, text your name to 502. 599-9722, 502-599-9722. You'll either get a hoodie or the MagnaWave News and Views uh, for your participation in a uh, conversation with me. I love to do, it's just so much more how we can converse like we did on the last question about machines. You can actually talk about things <clears throat> better than I can maybe say it and I might forget something as I'm just trying to mentally go through uh, the various things that we are <coughs> need to have a little refreshment here a little water the magna wave insulated tumblers which were the uh, gifts last week for those that are called in we'll do that again also don't forget uh go join uh the alexa magna wave flash briefing and uh, here every day the flash briefings about MagnaWave, about the history, about different uh, guidelines and, and what we're doing and different testimonials that have been shared and learn in one or two minute uh, daily flash briefing that we produce here at MagnaWave for, for your learning. Go join up uh, to Alexa. I, I want to see a lot of people in there and then once or twice a week Alexa herself will tell you text this to this number and you could win a prize and that prize could be everything from a hoodie to maybe one of these days a machine and uh, so we want to uh, we're going to share we want to uh, have the gear out there we want you to enjoy and we want you to learn so that's my enticement to you go join up with Alexa listen to it uh, so we know that that you're there and uh, be eligible to win prizes or maybe come visit us or maybe we'll come visit you uh, the magna wave express is on the road and uh, we're setting up our schedule for the winter and fall to go to uh, various communities and do pop-ups and visit with the practitioners and visit with customers and visit with uh, doctors and people who are interested in seeing uh, what's going on let's see here we've got a uh, message here let's see who's ringing us okay let's open it up okay um, looks like it's Kelly let's give Kelly a call okay so we're ringing up here <clears throat> hello this is Kelly hey Kelly Pat Zemer with MagnaWave you're on hello hey how are you I'm the one who's writing in about this white line disease horse okay Okay, so my question for you is, I have done two treatments on the horse, which of course we all know we're going to see worse before we get better, because now we've woke up the, the cells, we've woke up some energy going on in those feet. I have his veterinarian coming today to actually sit and watch with me. Okay. My question to you, Pat, is would I be suggesting only using the hoof box at, say, five minutes? Uh, what I did is I did ten minutes at about medium I have the pulse pro and then I increased on the our next session with him the barn help seems to think he's worse I don't want them to think I'm causing any discomfort I'm trying to let them know I'm actually waking up those dead feet for him am I correct in letting them have that type of well information? you know it's it's interesting what is someone terms as worse you know if they're mm -hmm. if they're more if they're more ginger on their feet because all of a sudden you Correct. you know you got things going they may do that they may f have that type of, of feeling for a period of time <coughs> my suggestion excuse me would be to use the uh, the butterfly around the hoof or use yes. the the uh, the zoom box and the paddle 
uh, from the bottom. A moderate mm-hmm. setting is fine. I would go uh, eight to ten minutes, and okay. and knowing um, that that there's something going on. But you know, there there is the capability sometimes that you do stir something up, and they have to work through that in Absolutely. order in order to get down the road. But with that Absolutely. said, I would go eight to ten minutes, moderate setting. Uh, and consistency is the key here to get it to a point to where you see it. The vet will understand that when you put the horse on it and you're improving the the blood oxygenation and the blood flow and and they've experienced those types of things in the past when when things are happening. Well, wonderful, wonderful. I appreciate all your help. We love our machine and I'm out here in California so I'm, I'm I'm waking up with you. There you go. Well, thanks for <laughs> thanks for reaching out and uh, let me know how things go. And if you want Thank me to, you. if the vet wants to talk to somebody about it, uh, let yes. me know and I'd be happy to talk to him. Oh, I appreciate that so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, I didn't ask her what she wants. Text. Send me a uh, text, uh, Kelly, and tell me what it is that you'd like to have, the, uh, the hoodie or the MagnaWave News and Views, and uh, we will certainly get you um, what you want. So um, she's going to send me a text to tell me what she'd like to have. Uh, She's in California. She may not want the hoodie. Um, So if you're in California, you'd rather have a polo shirt, let me know. Uh, But it gets cold out there, too. And you might be in Northern California. I don't know exactly where you are. I don't have my map in front of me, Kelly. So just send me a text back and tell me what you'd like to uh, enjoy as far as MagnaWave gear or the news and views is concerned. (coughs) I've been battling a cold for a few days, so I apologize um, for my coughing and so forth uh, this morning, but uh, we are moving along. If you have any questions, uh, put them in there in the chat box and I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, Diane, thanks for being with us. Uh, Terry's joined us this morning. Keith is with us. Aaron's with us this morning. Aaron McElmurray, uh, Tracy Walker Bush, and other folks are with us. Uh, 17, uh, oh, she wants the hoodie in medium. Uh, great. Uh, let me write that down here in medium. Uh, so this is uh, great. We're up to uh, 20 visitors with us this morning. So if you want to send me a text, 502-599-9722. Uh, send me, uh, just send me a text with your name on it, and I uh, will call you right back, and we'll have the discussion that you'd like to have with regard to MagnaWave. Uh, and whatever uh, that may be. And this morning we're giving away a hoodie and, or the MagnaWave news and views uh, for your enjoyment and use with your with your personal use or with your with your customers. <clears throat> we're up to uh, 20 or so uh, visitors at this point, which is great because that number goes up and down and people uh, are able to be with us all day long. I just like to have good content so someone can listen to this later and, and have an enjoyable uh, piece of content and something that they can that they can learn from uh, as they're driving around or, or watching this on Facebook or whatever their particular use uh, may be of the content. We just love to be here. I'd love to get it up one of these days. We're going to have a challenge for you to share this with your friends. Let's get it up to 50 or 100 folks uh, online. Maybe we'll do that and, and have a big giveaway one day to do that. Again, go uh, if you've got an Alexa device, uh, go do that and uh, uh, let's um, get on your Alexa. Uh, question about a mayor. I don't know who it is, but we have a question about a mayor. Let's go over and make the call and see what the question may be about a mayor. Join Alexa, we're gonna be giving away, uh, you'll be told when to fax something on Alexa a particular day to receive some gear, or maybe even we'll give away attachments or a machine. So come join us on Alexa and learn, will help us. Hey, who's with me?
Well, certainly. Uh, do you have the wings? Um, I do not have the wings. Okay. I have not gotten them yet. That's okay. The large loop, I'd use the large loop. I'd treat an overall treatment on the certainly the hips and the shoulders. Uh, overall body treatment will be good. But if you got the area of the hip to, to where she's having issues, treat the hip, treat the leg, treat the hock, treat the knee, because you don't know where some of that problem is coming from. Uh, as to from, uh -huh. from compensation and certainly you could treat both hips uh, and, and to be able to look for areas what we call referred pain to where they you know, I always equate it to you go to the state fair and you wear the wrong pair of shoes and you get there and you think oh my god I've got the wrong shoes on and by the end of the day you can't really walk and your neck is killing you and everything's going on and you think oh, I'm just so sore it's your shoes you had the wrong shoes and, and and so we don't know where it's coming from we know where the injury was and where the problem was so certainly go there but look at other areas where they could be doing some compensation to be influencing that discomfort and that pain now it could be that the atrophy was so bad that that the muscle con the muscle strength is just not going to be there there is nerve damage that's not going to recover can you still make okay. them more comfortable and make them more fluid for sure and and you want to go there but you want to approach it from the standpoint that that you're going to try to help the area and and if it's that serious it's certainly not going to happen in two or three treatments if this has been going on for six months or a year or longer you're not going to reverse that in one treatment but so that's where it becomes a, a question uh, but if it's in a rescue and you're working with them and you got it going on you know that that's you're going to do nothing but help your business and your credibility by helping this particular animal uh, be more comfortable and more successful in its day-to-day -day life. No, definitely. Um, would you, how often would you say you'd start out on uh, working on this mare? What, what I like what I like to do in those type situations is I like to do what I call getting ahead of a situation. I would say treat five to six days in a row and, and okay. to, to kind of get ahead of what's going on and then treat as often as necessary to keep the progression moving along. Uh, that might okay. be twice a week, that might be once a week, that might be once a month if you get them into a comfortable position that they can, that they can then uh, proceed uh, comfortably and hap happily in their day-to-day -day, day life. But uh, I like to do several treatments at the beginning and then treat as necessary. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Of course, we've seen this mare in a couple of days. So. Yeah, yeah. Tell, who, uh, that, give me your name again. I'm sorry I missed that. Oh, my name is Brandy Miner. Brandy. Okay. And Brandy, what do you want? Um, I think I would love the sweatshirt. So, want the hoodie and what size? Um, let's do a I'm trying to think. You, um, you want to text it to me? Let's do a large okay all right brandy thank you so much for reaching out to us and i hope this helps let me know how it's going i will thank you so much have a great day you too bye-bye mm -hmm. Bye. okay uh great question from brandy and uh, she wanted the hoodie so if you would like to get we got uh we got a couple minutes here maybe we're right at the end of the uh, time slot and i got another meeting i need to go to but i'll take another if you got a question you want to ask and uh, give me a text and we'll go from there or if you got a question you want to ask in the chat box we'll take a look at that and get those questions uh, answered heather thanks for being with us and the smiley face we always uh, enjoy that and uh, always enjoy having the uh, conversations <coughs> Excuse me, that cough, it's, it's been working on me. So, uh, again, join up with Alexa and uh, get your daily flash briefing and win. We're going to be telling you once a week, text to this and you could win something. Could be a monthly prize, could be anything up to the machine. Uh, I'm not saying that for sure, but we, we're going to give away a machine one of these days on Alexa. On Alexa. Just made that uh, decision. So uh, join up with Alexa and you'll be told when to, uh, when to text something to win. And uh, it'll be all over the board from gear to uh, equipment to machines. Come see me on Alexa. We are enjoying that. It's a great way to learn and, and grow. So let's see how many of you can uh, join us on Alexa. Uh, go to your, if you have Alexa, uh, go to your uh, Amazon thing and go to Alexa Flash Briefings and add MagnaWay. Uh, if you don't have an Alexa on your phone, if you don't have an Android phone, go to the uh, App Store, the, the uh, iPhone App Store, and uh, you can download Alexa there and uh, 
partake, participate and partake in the uh, daily flash briefings. So I'm Pat Ziemer with MagnaWave. I've been glad to be with you. It's been fun to be with you today. We've had a lot of great questions, a lot of great content that we're going to uh, disseminate back to the people that are uh, wanting to learn more about MagnaWave and uh, grow and improve their health and wellness of themselves and their animals. So thanks for being with me and uh, we'll see you next week on the MagnaWave office hours. Have a great week. Wave on and uh, for better health and wellness. Bye-bye.